Good morning to those who are joining us online. Uh, and, uh, good morning again to those in the room. Uh, before we get going, a few heads up for what's going on this week. Um, tonight, 8 o'clock, you can join us online again. Uh, Bible study. Then this week, uh, be aware that uh, Tuesday Q will be on for those who, who want to come and join us and uh, chew over um, the Word of God with us uh, and chew also your sandwiches or whatever you want to bring with you. Dinner. Um, that's five o'clock um, or thereabouts uh, on Tuesday afternoon. Then Wednesday at 7.30 at our house we will have prayer. It's the ministry's day of prayer. So uh, please join us with that if you would like to. And then maybe join us online if you're not able to join us in person. Uh, just look for us. We will put it on a, on a Facebook room maybe. And then uh, you can hopefully find us there. Um, then Fisherman's Friday is on this Friday afternoon, five o'clock again, down by the river. We we're going to call it uh, Fish Finger Friday because it might be slightly l lighter this week because we've got a lot of things on. But uh, and then uh, uh, just uh, a few other things. Bible school. We are thinking of maybe doing some classes with uh, with Baltimore Bible College. If you would like details of that, come and see us. Talk to us. Uh, we're hoping to start that within the next few weeks. Um, we will uh, watch the classes together and uh, for those who want to do it for audit, uh, there is a cost involved obviously, we can talk about that when we see people in person, um, but uh, that uh, we're hoping to go ahead with a class on 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Revelation, so we give uh, big subjects if you'd like to know more about that. Come and do it for audit if you don't want to do it for credit. Um, if you don't understand what these terms mean, come and talk to us, ask us about it. Because uh, it may be very new to some of you. Okay, so that's the details of that. And then on the 26th of uh, October, a Wednesday night, we will have a special guest speaker from overseas. So come and join with us then, um, Pastor from our ministry. So. That's something to put in the diary. Uh, okay, good, let's get going. Uh, we'll pray and we'll give this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We pray for those that can't be with us today, Lord. Guide us and strengthen us, Lord, we ask. Uh, touch hearts today, Lord, we pray. Be with uh, Myrtle, uh, Jim, Mary, uh, Diane, Haley, and uh, Lisa various ones, Lord, that, that can't make it today, Lord, just touch each one, Lord, we, we ask, encourage hearts today, Lord, we pray, speak to hearts, Lord, we, we ask, most importantly, fill us with your life today, Lord, fill us with your spirit, and anoint from your throne, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now. Okay. We will read today from Mark Chapter Six. says in verse 1 and he went out from thence and came to his own country and his disciples followed him and when the Sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence hath this man these things and what wisdom is this 
which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is this is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and of jo Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honour, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and his own house. And he could do no mighty work, save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marvelled because of their unbelief. And he went round about to the villages, teaching. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you now. And we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you for the Saviour, Jesus the King. We thank you for the finished work of Jesus Christ. We thank you for his ministry on the earth. We thank you for his character and his life. And Lord, we thank you for his word now. Lord, we pray that you touch these words, these thoughts. Fill it with yourself. Fill it with your life, Lord, we pray. And anoint with your Holy Spirit, Lord, we have nothing in ourselves. We have no words of our own. But your word is full, your word is mighty, your word is powerful. And we look to you, Lord, for Ramus, for utterance of the Spirit, Lord. Anoint now, we ask, in your mercy, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> wow. Doesn't it reveal something about the heart of man? Here we have people who face Jesus. What do they see? They see a teacher. They see amazing teaching, amazing preaching. Something that transforms their life. Something that they've not heard before. Something that actually challenges their thinking. Something that maybe shocks them. But something that where maybe God's word suddenly makes sense before. They see, they, they question, where does he have this teaching? Where does he have this wisdom? Where does he come from? They see miracles. They see people healed. They see situations turned around. They see demons come out. And yet, what does it say? They're offended. <laughs> wow, it's funny, isn't it? Think for a minute in the life of Jesus. How often did this happen? Healing on the Sabbath, offended. Casting out demons, oh, offended. Somebody with a withered hand, oh, offended. Speaking to a Samaritan, oh, offended. Speaking to a sinful woman, oh, offended. And so often, somebody was offended. By what Jesus did. So often somebody got offended, somebody got upset. People didn't like it. But it's the power of God. It's the power of God to set people free. The power of God to change things. And we can see that. Maybe we can see it in our own lives. But there's a temptation there to be offended. God is dealing with my sinful heart. That means I'm a sinner. Yeah. 
God is dealing with the things that I'm attracted to in this world. Maybe they're not good. Wow. Okay. But I'm offended about that. Okay, good. But you know what? Jesus is there and Jesus is real. And you know what really offended them? Was this is the carpenter. This is the this is yeah, this is the carpenter here. You know we we know him. He's got a shop on the high street. It's like well we we know we 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 go past him every day. It's like yes he came and did the skirting board for us the other week. You know it's like uh, yes. I bought her I bought a table off him. It's like fine. you know and the, and now he gets up and preaches, and now he gets up and does miracles. But he's the carpenter. Somebody ordinary. He shouldn't be doing that. You know, that's for, the, that's for the, the leader of the synagogue. Isn't that for people who are priests? Isn't that for people who know the scripture? Scribes, people who know the, the scripture. Pharisees, people who are holy. You know, they should be doing things like that. Well, you're, you're a carpenter. Somebody ordinary. Somebody who's insignificant. This carpenter was on top of the world looking down on creation. No, sorry, that's that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But it was Jesus. What do we see when we look at Jesus? What do we see when we look at Jesus? Do we look into the eyes of someone who loves us? You know, it's a lot of people look at the life of Jesus and they see maybe, oh, a religious teacher. Who was Jesus? Oh, a religious figure from the past. Oh, uh, you know, I, uh, maybe he's like, uh, oh, uh, an avatar of holiness. Maybe he's, uh, maybe he's a prophet. Maybe he's a he's a he's a he's another form of guru. Maybe he was a good teacher. Maybe he was a moral judge. Maybe he was a leader. Maybe he was an un misunderstood revolutionary who stood against the Romans. And, you know, oh, you know, it's like, and people have all these ideas about who Jesus was. Maybe he was a nice person. Lord preserve us. <laughs> you know, but this is the thing. Who was Jesus? Who do we see? A carpenter, a nobody. I see a carpenter because I don't want to let him affect my life. Wow. I see a carpenter because I'm happy to have a new beam put in, in the in the window frame. But I don't want a new hope put in my heart. I don't want a new habit formed in my life. I don't want things to change. I see a carpenter. Because that's what I want to see. I get offended if somebody says this different. I get offended if somebody says, well, he, he was more than just a teacher. What if he was the Son of God? Simon Barjona, flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you but the Spirit of God. What did he say? He said, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the of the living God. You are the Messiah. Do we see a saviour? Do we see a Messiah? Do we see somebody who loves us? Do we see somebody who went to the cross for us? Do we see somebody who can challenge us? Do we see somebody who can change our life? This is it. This is Jesus. Who is he? Who is he to us? What do we see? And what do we want to see? 
Well, I see somebody who affects my life on a Sunday morning for a couple of hours. And then again online a bit later and then somebody else. But I, you know, but that's, that's it, you know. Now, do we see somebody who is actually there in our darkest moment? Do I see somebody who I can run to when temptation comes? Do I see somebody who I can flee to in my time of trouble? Do I see somebody whose will is sovereign? Do I see somebody whose word is powerful even over and against my own experience? That was something I had to learn the hard way years ago. That actually, you know, we have experiences in life and the experience of life says, well, this is who I am. This is what I live. This is how I live. And then what happens is God's word comes against it. And sometimes we have to take God's word over and against our own experience. Over and against our own judgment. Over and against our own desires. Wow. Do we see someone who will challenge us? Do we see someone who has the power to save? Do we see somebody who's going to judge us? Somebody we don't have to have anything to do with? Oh, you know what? I don't want to go to, to church because people are just judgment. Or do we see somebody who looks on us with eyes of love? Somebody will say, well done, good and faithful, sir. Wow. First Samuel 16. We have the Samuel. Verse 6, and it says, And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on his height or his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as a man see for man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looketh on the heart wow in a few verses David is anointed king seven brothers go before him that all maybe look better, have better prospects, have more role levels, have a better job, career, better physical physique. But the Lord looks on the heart. People saw a shepherd boy. God saw a king. Saul saw a guitarist. Jesse saw a cheese deliverer. His brother saw a naughty lad. He'd come to see the battle. This is going on into chapter 17. Goliath saw a dog. A weak youth. Oh, well, you, you're going to throw stones at me like a dog. That's, that's, that's what it's, it's come to. But David, the Lord saw the heart of David, a man after God's own heart. And that's who God chose. Think about it. Was Saul at 
the battle with Goliath. Yes. Were his brothers there? All of those big tall brothers? Yes. Did any of them step up against Goliath? No. God saw their hearts. And he knew how they would react when Goliath was in front of them. But God saw David's heart and he knew how he would react when Goliath was there. So God chose to anoint David to be king. Let's have a look at, at Luke chapter 7. verse 44 it says and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon seest thou this woman I entered thine house and thou gavest me no water for my feet but she hath washed, washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her hair thou gavest me no kiss but this woman, since she came, since the time I came, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same love is little. Wow. Simon, seest thou this woman? Who do you see? Someone sinful, someone of bad reputation, somebody you don't want to touch, somebody you don't want in the house. Somebody who's defined by their past. The Lord sees someone who can be forgiven. The Lord sees someone who has a heart to draw near to Him. Do we look at other people with our own eyes, or do we see people with God's eyes? When we go on outreach, do we see people who could potentially be in church? When we are with our friends, family, neighbours, do we see them as God sees them? Zacchaeus. Jesus, why bother? Don't bother with Zacchaeus. There's no point. Zacchaeus is a lost case. No. Zacchaeus is the one whose house I'm going to go to. There's potential there. There's great potential there. There is the life of Christ. There is healing. There's forgiveness. Transformation. said to somebody recently we all need to discover who we are in Christ you know this is the issue for our day and age the identity our identity has to be in Christ the identity is different Judges chapter 6 let's look at that for a minute verse 11 it says 
and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah. that pertained unto Joash the Abbey Ezrite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites okay Gideon hiding from the Midianites hiding what little he has verse 15 it says and he said unto him O my Lord wherewith shall I save Israel behold my family is poor in Manasseh and I am the least of my father's house okay so he is the least of his father's house of the poorest family and Manasseh is the smallest tribe okay that is Gideon's estimation of who he is that is his definition this is why he is hiding in a wine press wine press is down under the ground but look at verse 12 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him the Lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor that is God's estimation of who Gideon is. Do we see the difference? The least member of the poorest family of the smallest tribe, or actually no, a mighty man of valor, who has the Lord with him. God is on your side. God is able. This is us. How do we see ourselves? How do we estimate who we are? With the Lord's eyes, with our own eyes, do we see ourselves in our past failures, in our weaknesses, in our worst moments? Or do we see ourselves in what the Lord is able to do? You know, we, we mentioned uh, last week about, uh, or Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night rather, about um, Deborah and about, um, and then about Samuel. How God cho chose people who were maybe slightly lesser in, in estimation. But then you look at the book of Judges and you find nearly all of them had something wrong with them. left-handed, illegitimate, womanizer, coward, whatever it was. They all have some reason why God can't use them. Every one of them. They all have some reason why actually they would be a wrong choice for God. But actually, God chooses them. God uses them. God raises them up. The law of God is meant to see our disqualification. It's meant for us to see our need. Grace is for us to realize that God can go beyond. And that God does go beyond. By the law, we're all disqualified. By tradition, none of us could stand in God's presence. But by grace, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the sacrifice of Calvary, we are able to go and approach to the throne room of heaven into God's presence
Acts chapter 6. We have the story of Stephen. In, seven, in chapter 7 he is martyred. They run at him. They stop their ears. They don't want to hear what he's saying. They're offended by it. They, they, uh, they can't bear it. They take up stones to stone him. They, they, they take his life from him. But in, in, uh, in chapter 6 verse 15 it says, and all they sat in the council looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Wow. <coughs> they looked on Stephen. The countenance that God had given him was like, well, I'm like an angel like God's messenger holy set apart separate this world is not going to like it no they don't but that's who I am we don't back down we don't give the message we don't fail to give the message because people won't like it we don't give up because people don't want to hear it stop talking <laughs> you know we have it, this age of what they call the cancel culture whereby if they don't like what, they, what you say then they will cancel you from saying it but you know what it's not new is it really it started with Stephen Martyrdom was the original council culture, wasn't it? Let's, let's silence somebody's voice forever because we don't like what they're saying. But the truth remains. The message goes on. You can remove the messengers. You can remove as many messengers as, as you like. But the message goes on. thinking about this the other day um, when I lived in Prague we used to go to church in Yishni Miesto which was like down uh, uh, as far as the metro line would go to a, a, a metro station called Haya which means the woods nice little one under communism it had had a different name and there was still a statue there because it used to be called Cosmonautu in honor of the cosmonauts the glory of the soviet space program was the fact that they managed to put a man into space to orbit the earth before anyone else did yuri gagarin yes famous the first man in space nobody can ever take that away from him it's like well it's great It was a, a big victory for communism and a big victory for atheism because he said famously, ah, up in space, previously man believed that there was a God above the clouds. Now I have been into space, now I've been above the clouds and I don't see any God here. There is no good here. So it was used very much by the communist authorities to say, ha, ah, this primitive religion of previous years is, is all nonsense because we have been into space, we have been into the heavens, and there was no God there. And apparently there was a small girl in one of the classes who asked her teacher does Yuri Gagarin have a pure heart does 
the reason being Matthew 5 8 Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall seek out the pure in heart they will seek out maybe our heart is not pure maybe this is why we fail to see God as he is Jesus said to Nicodemus Verily, verily, I say unto thee Except a man be born again He cannot see the kingdom of God John 3.3 3. kingdom of God. Can you see it? Can you see what God is doing? Can you see the Lord? Can you see him in his kingdom? No. Maybe you need to be born again. Maybe you need to rethink things. Maybe you need to have a, a change of heart. Maybe you need a purer heart. If our heart is filled with mockery, if our heart is filled with selfishness, if our heart is filled with lust, desire, can we see God? A heart of derision. Can we see God? Can we see his hand? Or will we always just see, oh no, blah, blah. Oh no, it's a load of rubbish. Oh, it's nonsense. Uh, you know, we don't, oh, I don't want to listen to that. Maybe there are some people who will only ever see a carpenter. Them shelves haven't lasted. I asked for some shelves put up. You know, there will always be people who find an excuse. There will always be people who find something that makes them say no I don't want to listen I don't want to hear what do we see when we look at Jesus a cheeky carpenter who thinks he's more than something he had the gall to stand up in the synagogue and preach he had the gall to criticize the Pharisees that had gone before. He had the gall to, to, to start teaching things that we'd never heard before. I only ever go to the synagogue to hear things that I've heard before. I want to hear anything new. Now, Jesus, the power. Jesus, the Savior. Jesus, the power to transform. Jesus, the difference in our lives. But to see him, maybe we need to have that purity of heart. Maybe we need to have that openness to see the kingdom of God. Maybe we need to let him in. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. And we thank you for all of your ways, Lord. Strengthen us today, Lord, we pray. Be with each one, Lord. Be with those that need your special touch today, Lord, we ask. Help us to see people as you see them in their potential. Help us to have our identity in you. Not in this world, not in our past, not in our weakness. But help us to see you, Lord. In your glory. 
in the power to transform in who you really are not in who we think you are not in who we make you to be but who you are thank you Lord we worship you, we thank you, Lord, and we just lift you up now, Lord. We we pray, Lord, that you will be with each one, Lord. And, Lord, we ask if there's anyone out there watching who has never trusted you as their Savior, who's maybe put up barriers, skepticism, and bitterness, Lord, we just pray that this would be the time when they say, Lord, I want to see what others see. I want to understand who you are. I want to know you. I want to trust you. Guide, fill me with your spirit now. Add your life, Lord, we pray. Touch and transform, we ask now. Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, we're going to sign off now, and uh, God willing, we'll be back again later. Take care, and God bless.